Another day, a couple more big instances of media ignoring that Bernie Sanders exists whenever there's good news about Bernie Sanders. Hey everybody, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. If you've been following my channel over the past week or so, you'll know that I put out a video that explored the way in which Bernie Sanders uh, is covered in the media. And this applies to my most recent video earlier today about Jagmeet Singh and how he's covered in the media. And how when there's good things about either of those people, there tends to be a reluctance to either write the story or to ensure that, that the positive news isn't portrayed in the headline or to otherwise explain it away as anomalous or based on, you know, factors that are, are outside the control of the actual campaign, which is to say that they don't sort of deserve the praise for success that they're having, you know, and on and on and on and on. Whether that's talking about Bernie Sanders doing well amongst fundraising, or talking about Bernie Sanders polling well, or talking about Jagmeet Singh's bold plan to not only address climate change, but provide Canadians head-to-toe truly comprehensive medical care. Those stories go to the wayside, yet when Bernie polls badly in a poll, or when Jagmeet Singh is being attacked for, you know, not fundraising uh, off the backs of rich Canadians, then, then it's headline news, and then the story can focus on them. And, you know, that video I made, I looked at two key posts from Politico, one of which focused on Bernie supposedly failing and his supporters getting antsy, and one of them, you know, mentioning that Biden's in first, Harris and uh, Warren are tied for third, and wouldn't you know it, they didn't mention who was in second. And I have a couple more instances today of, of big American media sources doing something similar. And the first one, again, comes from Politico. If you look at this tweet right here, they basically outline a new poll. This is their poll, suggesting that Biden's in first, Sanders is in second, and Harris and Warren are sort of fighting over third and fourth, although they suggest that Harris has a bit of momentum in that regard and has sort of taken up third spot. But if you read the tweet, it doesn't mention Bernie Sanders. It notes Joe Biden having a bit of a rough time. It notes a bit of a horse race between Harris and Warren, but it does not mention Bernie Sanders. Now, I know there's character limits on Twitter, but they could have said, you know, Bernie Sanders largely status quo. They could have mentioned that, but they chose not to because, again, a narrative that Bernie Sanders is still in second place is a good narrative. Biden's been in first for the entirety of this race, so the fact is, is that Biden's second place challenger, that's a big position to have. And so not noting that the guy who's in second has been in second pretty reliably uh, sort of distracts him from the media. So people start thinking of the front runner Biden and the two challengers that they're willing to note, Harris and Warren, and not the actual guy who's in second place. And the next one out, this comes from Harry Enton. Harry Enton used to be at 538. He now works at CNN. He's, you know, a political analyst. He's a, kind of an, a numbers guy, does a lot of polling work. And he did a sort of informal Twitter poll. Now, of course, this isn't officially from his employer or anything, but it's an example of how influential media individuals, not just institutions, but individuals, will try to craft certain narratives. And as you can see, you have Enton asking here, who do you feel is going to win the Democratic primary? And of course, that's different than who do you want to win. That's, you know, you can make an educated guess. But he puts three names. He puts Biden and Harris and Warren. All three of them are credible candidates. They are all in the top four. But who does he leave out besides the guy who is at least in most polls, the number two runner, and is certainly in the big group no matter the poll? They leave out Bernie Sanders. And of course, he puts someone else. Now, of course, wouldn't you know it, someone else won this poll. And I don't think it's because everybody's really hoping that Marianne Williamson or, you know, Andrew Yang is going to pull this one out. It's because Bernie Sanders is that someone else for the vast majority of respondents. And Bernie Sanders was left out because there's this desire to craft a narrative that he doesn't have a chance of winning. That the guy who is raising a ton of money from a ton of people the guy who's consistently polling in second, the guy who has a massive national infrastructure, the guy who has highly dedicated and loyal supporters, the guy who has the kind of supporters that will go door to door to door to door to recruit more supporters, isn't a credible pick to be the one that you think might win this. So he's relegated to the group of everybody at one or two or three or four percent. This poll on Twitter where you can only really select four examples, 
only makes sense if you put Warren, Harris, Sanders, and Biden. I understand that leaves everybody else out, but those four are the big dogs right now. In the polls I've seen, for instance, you know, those are the ones that are kind of consistently above 10% now. The other candidates, be they O'Rourke or Klobuchar or Gillibrand or Budicic or Yang or whoever else, they're consistently sort of below 10%. And I think those are the four main front runners. And so to leave out any one of those four from that poll, you're, you're getting a disingenuous result. And so maybe Harry was being a little bit cheeky. Maybe he felt, I'll leave out Bernie Sanders. This will get a ton of comments and I'll get ratioed, but it'll get a lot of interest and I'll sort of spark that reaction from the Bernie supporters here on Twitter. Maybe that was his goal, but that's irrelevant. We have yet another couple examples of big, mainstream, credible media sources and individuals, people who trade under the mythology, if not the reality, that they are unbiased, openly leaving out Bernie Sanders from their top-line narratives. And again, if you go into the sites and you go into the long-form reports, of course Bernie Sanders is mentioned. But in the top-line coverage, where the majority of the attention and eyeballs are, they usually leave him out unless the narrative is not positive about Sanders, in which case there will be coverage aplenty. So again, I just want to outline this again. I don't want to be too repetitive, but I really want to outline that it's our responsibility as progressives, Canadian and American progressives, to stand up for one another, to talk about Bernie Sanders and Jagmeet Singh, who are facing similar levels of media animosity because they have similar visions for society, good visions, left visions, visions to make society truly just. And we need to be there when the media craft certain narratives to exclude them or to attack them. So keep an eye out for this stuff. Talk about it with your friends and colleagues and family. Heck, if you see something like this, send me a note. I'd love to read more about this. Please like and share this video. Comment on it. Let people know about it. Because the more people hear this stuff and see the examples and have the, the dots connected for them, the more they'll see that this isn't paranoia or exaggeration, but a sober reading of a long-running media narrative. And of course, for the very same reason, I would love your support on Patreon. That support is instrumental to help building a stronger left platform here on YouTube. It helps to improve the quality and quantity of content on this channel, and it helps to solidify a left of center voice that covers both Canadian and American politics on this platform, and does so from a definitively progressive perspective. So if you want to see that kind of coverage, supporting me on Patreon, it's a good place to start. Have a great one, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.